Hello, my name's Bo Jensen and I'm a keeper here at Hamwell Zoo and I'm here today in the new Empatamarin space with Keeper Martina who's been instrumental in getting these wonderful creatures here to Hanwell and she's going to tell us a little bit about them. So Martina, where did these individuals actually come from? Um, so we got our Empatamarin from Nuki Zoo but originally they're from South America located near the Amazon Basin. So in the Amazon, what sort of habitat do they live in and how did you emulate that when you decided to design their space? Um, so they naturally live in foresty areas near water um, and when designing their um, space we have to take into account that they wouldn't spend much time on the floor so everything they would need such as their feeding stations would have to be high up to simulate their natural environment. So they're an arboreal creature, they spend most of their time up trees yeah. and it's quite a tall enclosure, about six metres high. What sort of problems do you face um, on day-to-day -day activities like husbandry with the enclosure being so tall? Um, well, our entertainment is actually target trained, so they'll come to us if we need to do things such as health checks. Um, so we don't tend to find many problems. <laughs> they are, they are absolutely wonderful. So um, we're feeding them, we're feeding them their favourite um, uh, treats today, normally the food that we use to train them, to target train them as Martina said. So we're giving them grapes and sweet corn which is their favourite, but how did you come to design their diet? How did you emulate that wild diet and indeed what, what, what is their wild diet? Um, so in the wild they'll eat things like uh, such as fruits, um, certain flowers, they'll have things like insects and occasionally they'll try and get their hands on a frog. Um, so to simulate it um, here, after a lot of research and knowledge based on working with primates before, um, we were able to come up with a complete diet. So they get trio munch, which is basically a pellet that contains all, contains all the nutrients they'll need. Like a maintenance pellet? Yeah, and then they get things like vegetables um, and insects. Historically, it's been really difficult to devise uh, natural zoo animal diets. Not only is it really difficult to get hold of the things they eat in the wild, when we're substituting them, that can be quite difficult too, and fruit. Uh, certainly commercial fruit in this country is really sweet, it's really high in sugars, which is why although their wild diet contains a lot of fruit, we actually give them a lot of vegetables because it's more nutritionally similar to the things that they eat in the wild. And uh, you mentioned in the wild they live in um, the Amazon Basin in, um, in Brazil. What um, threats do they um, face? Because they're actually classed as non-threatened. So uh, what threats do they face and why is it important that we have them in zoos here? Um, so due to deforestation, their um, habitat is actually threatened. Um, so they're very restricted in the areas that they can go, um, which could affect their population. So they're part of a breeding program here, which is very important in keeping them at a sustainable population. Um, so for example, Andy will hopefully be getting moved to America, where she'll get mixed with another group and hopefully breed from there. Um, likewise with us, we're hoping to um, get a male in the future and hopefully have some little babies. So hopefully, um, that be, uh, well, hopefully if you have some babies, that'd be wonderful. And how can our visitors help? Um, so just by coming here and learning a bit about them and where they're from, um, we're hoping to increase awareness about deforestation and encourage them to use more sustainable materials. And that's very much um, part of the bigger picture, isn't yeah. it? Being more sustainable, being more green and doing what we can for uh, all of our wildlife, not just the Emperor Tamarin and certainly their habitat which is near threatened in the Amazon. Um, and it's everything we can do to, um, to help them. And who wouldn't, who wouldn't want to? There's something else that you guys can do. We run an adoption program where for 30 pounds you can sponsor one of these wonderful animals for an entire year and a plaque will be push up outside on their space so everyone can see just how generous you've been and every penny of the profits that come from our adoption screens goes directly into our conservation and education programs. And I hope you come to visit our wonderful new Ember to Ember Tamarins soon. So until next time, thank you very much for joining us. And from Hamazoo, thank you very much and bye-bye. Bye-bye.